listen, I, you know, I've seen many characterizations of peace talks today as, as bearing signs of hope. But tell me, what do you sense in them? I do not see any sign of hope. Um, it's difficult to negotiate with someone when the uh, gun is being at your head. And um, as Golda Meir has said once, that it's impossible to discuss peace with someone who came to kill you. So Russia has a serious track record of lies and manipulations, even when it is conducting peace negotiations. So I think that Russia is using this negotiation uh, process right now as a smokescreen in order to regroup and to attack with the new um, power and additional rage uh, that he, it has been showing already across our country. Well, I was going to ask you, if not hope, then, then what? I mean, what the concern was, but your sense is that this is simply a diversion? Am I understanding you correctly? Uh, from my perspective, Russia is losing around Cave, and that's why it is saying right now that it's going to withdraw. But at the same time, Cave has been attacked several times today. So when Russia has already made that promise, that means that Russia didn't mean what it has been saying and is just using the time right now to uh, rearm its uh, troops and to ensure that it is actually attacking both Kiev, Chernihiv, and other cities, both in the north, east, and south of Ukraine, as well as in the west, as it has been doing by its uh, missiles. What would be a significant gesture, if not what it's doing now, that is to say it's signaling that it is prepared to stand down to some extent, what would be a significant gesture in your mind that could advance the state of talks right now? You know, I think that uh, some goodwill with even regard to uh, humanitarian corridors not being bombed, not being blown up, uh, that would be already some movement ahead. But we are having the problems to, uh, to evacuate people from those siege cities and, and uh, uh, shelled on and pounded on cities at this particular moment. More than half of the million of Ukrainian people are waiting to be evacuated, and Russia is not providing for that opportunity. So here we go. That's a very, very humane thing to do, even during the wartime. Uh, but Russia is not willing to, to deliver upon that. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about Canada's potential role in all of this, with, especially with your visit to Ottawa upcoming. What is it that, that you see uh, as part of, in terms of Canada's part that it could play here? There, there is some talk about Canada perhaps becoming a guarantor of, of Ukraine's safety if things progress the way as intended. What's your sense of that? You know, I think that um, Canada has been already doing a lot in terms of helping Ukraine but a lot more could be done. And if that is one of the options on the table where Canada could step in with its guarantees, that would be a terrific news. But at this point, I don't think that we actually have had a clear public signal from Canadian government on readiness to do so. All right, we're gonna to have to leave it there, but thank you for making the time to join us. Ivana Klimpush-Sanzadze, Member of Parliament in Ukraine. Thank you so much.